Good to be here this evening, and um, I thank Pastor for allowing me to uh, come and share God's Word this evening. So thank you, Pastor, for that. And before I get into the message, I just want to say by word of testimony before I start that um, we came here about about six months ago and never really had an opportunity to speak to everyone at one time. And I just want to say how welcome we feel here as a family coming here. It's very interesting, about 10 years ago, Katie and I came and visited this church and we sort of went away and we said, how could we end up at Coffs Harbour Bible Church? 10 years later, here we are. So the Lord works in uh, very mysterious ways and and here we are and we really uh, feel welcome here and just want to take this moment to say thank you. And another thing as well is this past week leading up Um, to preaching, quite a number of you have come up to me and said we're praying for you with your uh, preparation and I really, really appreciate that. Um, It really helps uh, as I'm studying. I think people are praying for me and that just, that means a lot. Thank you very much and uh, I believe you have a, we have a very good pastor, a very good leader and there's a very good balance here uh, at this church. So thank you all and uh, keep on keeping on. Okay, let's just uh, open in a word of prayer before we look into God's word. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for this evening. Thank you that we uh, can come here into your house. Pray, Lord, that our hearts would be open and be ready and willing to hear what you have uh, for us this evening. Pray, Lord, that we would most importantly hear, but that we would change as well in areas that we need to. And I pray that tonight as we look into your word, I'm sure there is... Uh, some small area even that every person here can make a change in their life to become more like Christ. Uh, We just pray that you would help us as we look into your word this evening. In Jesus' name, amen. Our text uh, that we're going to be mainly focusing on this evening is from Luke chapter 22. Uh, We're going to be looking um, at the denial of Peter denial uh, of the Lord Jesus Christ by Peter. It's interesting that this uh, particular story, I guess you say, is found in all four of the Gospels, in Matthew, Mark, Luke and John. And we're going to be flipping back and forth a little bit, so I hope you got your your fast-flicking fingers on so we can um, go and have a look at, we're going to be going to all of the four Gospels at at some point. Um, Just looking at this, uh, particular story. So, first of all, uh, I want to. Well, we'll go to Luke 22, and we might just read um, this portion, starting in verse 54. Luke chapter 22 and verse 54. Then took they him and led him and brought him into the high priest's house, and Peter followed afar off. And when they had kindled a fire in the midst of the hall, and were set down together. Peter sat down among them, but a certain maid beheld him as he sat by the fire, and earnestly looked upon him, and said, This man was also with him. And he denied him, saying, Woman, I know him not. And after a little while another saw him and said, Thou art also of them. And Peter said, Man, I am not. And about a space of one hour, After, another confidently affirmed, saying, Of a truth, this fellow also was with him, for he is a Galilean. And Peter said, Man, I know not what thou sayest. And immediately, while he yet spake, the cock crew. And the Lord turned and looked upon Peter, and Peter remembered the word of the Lord, how he had said unto him, Before the cock crow, thou shalt deny me thrice. And Peter went out and wept bitterly. So first of all, Uh, I want to do a bit of background um, long before this, going back right to the back uh, to where we first read about Peter. Um, So before Peter's denials, that's the first point, Um, just some background information about Peter, and I'm 
It's just a bit of a refresher of things that we know about Peter. So the description of Peter before his denials. As we think of the life of Peter, uh, as recorded for us, we can learn a fair bit about him. And there is a lot said about him if you really think about all the different times he has mentioned. It's, he's spoken about a fair bit in the Gospels. Uh, he was from Bethsaida. And his brother Andrew brought him to the Lord. You remember? Andrew found Messiah and he went and found his brother Peter and said, Come, I've found the Messiah. And he introduced Peter to the Lord. Um, by occupation, he was a fisherman. He's always mentioned first in the lists of the disciples. So he was, he was sort of the, the leader. He was the, the chief among uh, equals uh, in, within the disciples, within that group. Peter always had something to say. He, he, was, he was always quick to say something, even if it was the wrong thing. Many times it was. Um, but he was always quick to have a response uh, to a question or even to ask a question himself, whether it be of the Lord or, or of, of something that was happening. Uh, there was one instance where Peter even rebukes the Lord. What was he thinking at that point in time? Even to have the boldness to be able to uh, speak something against the Lord, say, Lord, you're not, you're not doing this right. No. He was uh, once fishing and they caught nothing. And the Lord said, cast the net, the nets on the other side, and they cast one net on the other side, and what happened? The, the net was full of fishes, so full that the net broke. Uh, there's many stories that we can uh, sort of remember about Peter, but that's just some things, and, and there's a lot of lessons uh, that can be learned out of all those stories. Uh, Peter was always enthusiastic and ready to jump in with both feet. And the Lord knew that Peter had a few flaws. And he, he saw something in Peter, though, and he had a, a plan for him and he was going to use him uh, to that end. <clears throat> so secondly, the drilling of Peter before the, his denials. The drilling of Peter before his denials. Peter was what you would call a slow learner. God had a big plan for him, and he knew that he was the guy for the job. But before he was ready, Peter needed to learn a few things. So the Lord said, I'm going to have to give him a scholarship to the School of Hard Knocks. All expenses paid, and uh, he sent him on his way. And uh, we're going to take up, uh, we're going to read verse 33 and just, just take up a bit of a, uh, yes, take up a verse 33 in Luke chapter 22. So we're going back. To, what did I say? 33. I'm looking at the wrong verse. 33. There we go. That's why it didn't make sense. And he said unto him, Lord, I am ready to go with thee both into prison and to death. Peter makes this outlandish statement um, to the Lord. He says, I'm ready to die with thee. I'm ready to go to prison. I'm ready to die with thee. As I said, he, he was ready to jump in with both feet. And he makes this statement in verse 33. And in verse 34, Jesus predicts the denial of Peter. And he said, I tell thee, Peter, the cock shall not crow this day before that thou shalt thrice deny that thou knowest me. And then going back to verse 31 as well, I want to read those two verses first, but then going back to verse 31, and the Lord said, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan hath desired to have you, that he may sift you as wheat. But I have prayed for thee, that thy faith fail not, and when thou art converted, strengthen thy brethren. So Peter, uh, sorry, the Lord predicted that Peter would deny him. And, but he also says there, this is, this is you know, a few, few hours before, um, this was to take place. Um, but he says to Peter, he actually tells him that it's going to be okay because you're not going to dem- deny me and then and totally forsake me, but there is a reason for all of this. And when 
when you come through the other side, uh, everything will be okay. And I think that's quite, quite good of the Lord. That's the lesson he was trying to uh, teach Peter. And it took a bit of a process, but that's where uh, the Lord was just guiding him through that. Now, this, um, there's a word there that uh, just needs some explaining. When they are converted, the word converted there, um, it means to revert, to come or go again, or to return again. So Peter was going to, he was going to deny the Lord, he was going to go away, he was going to backslide, but he would come again. And when thou art converted, when you come back again, uh, strengthen thy brethren. So uh, that was what the Lord was saying to him, yes, you will go away, you'll have a bit of a time, but then when you come back, strengthen your brethren. Just as Job was tested and he came forth as gold, so would Peter. Now we look at the, the actual denial itself. So secondly, Peter's, uh, during Peter's denials. So we've already read uh, the passage there which speaks exactly about that denial. Uh, and the, the disciples during Peter's denial want to look at the dis- disciples uh, just before we go and look at Peter. We have to give it to Peter. Uh, that he did at least follow at a distance. The other disciples totally deserted the Lord. They were nowhere to be found. Um, And they all said the same thing. They all said that they would not deny him and that they would all go with him to the death. But Peter, at least, was there at a distance um, following and... Uh, Curious to see what was going to happen next. And in Matthew 26 and verse 58, we won't turn there, but it says that he wanted to see the end. Uh, He wanted to see what was going to happen next. Uh, So just by his presence being there, he half did what he said. He wasn't really all that willing once he got into it. He wasn't all that willing to go... Uh, to prison or to death, but he was, he was at least following out a distance uh, better than what uh, the rest of the disciples were. They, would, they had taken off. Uh, so we might just read uh, that again. Then they took him and led him up and brought him to a high priest's house, and Peter followed afar off. And when they had kindled a fire in the midst of the hall and were set down together, Peter sat down among them. Just want to explain that uh, a little bit. So uh, there was there was uh, the hall, and that just means the courtyard. So in the palace, there was the the courtyard, which is sort of in the in the middle of the palace, um, and it was an open area. So it could rain and, and everything, and that's that's why they could have a, a fire. We say hall. We think in our hallway at home. Uh, we don't really make a fire in our hallway at home, although at Grafton we did. But that's, that was a, a part of a plan. I had a plan in that. A bit of renovation was going to happen. Uh, so we don't generally make a, a fire in our hallway at home or even, I guess we think of this as a hall as well, but we don't generally have a fire inside as an open fire. But this was uh, inside the palace in a courtyard. There they had a fire and there was, uh, they were gathered around this fire because it was cold at that time of the year. Uh, so... Uh, Now we're going to look at the details of the denials. Now this is where we're going to do a bit of turning, so I hope your fingers are are ready to go, and I hope it uh, it doesn't become too laboursome, but I think it's important just to see the different accounts all at the same time uh, and sort of compare them. And uh, as we will see, there is uh, some differences and we will explain those. So Luke uh, 22, 55 through 57, which we have read, um, we will turn to Matthew 26 and verse 69. Matthew 26. And verse 69. Now Peter sat without in the palace, and the damsel came to him, saying, Thou wast with Jesus of Galilee. But he denied before them all, saying, 
I know not what thou sayest. So that's Matthew's account. Now we turn over to Mark, chapter 14. If you've got bookmarks, it would pay to place a bookmark in these because we will be coming uh, back and forth. So Mark 14, verse 66. And as Peter was beneath in the palace, there, become, there cometh one of the maids of the high priest. And when he saw Peter warming himself, she looked upon him and said, And thou wast with Jesus of Nazareth. But he denied, saying, I know not, neither understand I what thou sayest. And he went out into the porch, and the cock crew. And then in John 18. John 18 and verses 16 and 17. But Peter stood at the door without, then went out that other disciple which was known unto the high priest, and spake unto her that kept the door, and brought in Peter. Then saith the damsel that kept the door to, unto Peter, Art not thou also one of this man's disciples? He saith, I am not. So here we have the, the four different accounts from four different writers of the same uh, exact thing that's happening. So in Luke, we have Peter sitting uh, and a certain maid uh, says, you, you are one of his disciples. And uh, he says, no, I'm, I'm not. Uh, in Matthew, he sat outside the palace and a damsel uh, said, you are one of the disciples. No, I'm not. Um, Mark says Peter was beneath the palace uh, and there was a maid that said, you are one of his followers? And he said, no, I'm not. In John, it says, Peter stood by the gate and the damsel that kept the door um, said, you're one of his followers? He said, no, I'm not. So there you can already see there is a, a few little uh, differences, um, uh, albeit minor ones. The second denial, and we'll uh, look at Luke 22 and verse 58. And after a little while, another saw him and said, Thou art also of them. And Peter said, Man, I am not. And then over to Matthew 26 again. And verse 71. And when he was gone out into the porch, another maid saw him and said unto them that were there, This fellow was also with Jesus of Nazareth. And again he denied with an oath, saying, I do not know the man. Uh, and then Mark fourteen sixty nine. And a maid saw him again and began to say to them that stood by, This is one of them. And John 18, verse 25. And Simon Peter stood and warmed himself. They said therefore unto him, Art not thou also one of his disciples? He denied it and said, I am not. So here once again, uh, they're very similar uh, in what they say, but there's, there's uh, some slight different details. And then uh, his third denial. So Luke 22 and verse 59 and 60. And about the space of one hour after another confidently affirmed, saying, Of a truth, this fellow also was with him, for he is a Galilean. And Matthew 26 and verses 73 and 74. And after a while came unto him they that stood by, and said to Peter, Surely thou art one of them, for thy speech betrayeth thee. And Mark 17, no, it's Mark 14, sorry, verses 70 and 71. And he denied it again, and a little after they, they that stood by said again to Peter, Surely thou art one of them, for thou art a Galilean, and thy speech agreeeth thereto. 
But he began to curse and to swear, saying, I know not this man of whom you speak. And then John 18 and verses 26 and 27. One of the servants of the high priest, being his kinsman, whose ear Peter cut off, saith, Did not I see thee in the garden with him? Peter denied. Peter then denied again, and immediately the cock crew. So once again, the details are a little different, and we will uh, look at those uh, in just a minute. Uh, we have in all four... Uh, of these instances, the cock crew, and immediately uh, Peter uh, realised he had remembered uh, what the Lord had said. So now we're going to look at the discrepancies of the denials. John tells us one interesting fact uh, that the other writers don't in John 18 and verse 15. Um, It is widely believed that the other disciple, let's read that verse, the other disciple that is mentioned there is John. So in John 18, verse 15. And Simon Peter followed Jesus, and so did another disciple. And that disciple was known unto the high priest, and went in with Jesus into the palace of the high priest. So as I said, it's it's widely believed that it was John. Uh, John does uh, this... A number of times in his gospel, he doesn't say uh, that it was me that was there at that particular time. So it is, it is widely believed that it was John uh, even there. So I said before that all of the disciples deserted, but there was one disciple that did not. So whether, whether it was John or whether it was some other disciple who was not part of the twelve or whether it was one of the others. We're not, we can't say dog, dogmatically, but uh, there is a very big possibility that it's John. Uh, <clears throat> whoever this other disciple was, uh, he was known by the high priest. Now, we have to give uh, Peter a little bit of credit here. He couldn't just go up to the palace and walk through the gate and walk into the door. He wasn't welcome there. Uh, it would be like... Uh, someone going to the lodge in Canberra and wanting to go and see Malcolm Turnbull and just barging through the door, uh, you would be faced with uh, some security and you would probably get yourself in a fair bit of trouble. It was very similar to that. There was, uh, you had to get past the security guard. In this case, it was uh, a damsel and that was her job to watch the gate and make sure that there was no unwelcomed guests uh, that came through. So that's, that's why Peter was outside. Uh, now, this other disciple, he was welcome. He, he, just, he was able to go through the gate. They knew who he was, and uh, he, was, he was welcome to go in. And then he got Peter his, his entry. He, get, he gave him a, a get through, uh, go, go past the gate card. He talked to the damsel there at the gate and said, uh, can you let Peter in? And, and in came Peter. And this is when uh, Peter was faced with uh, these, these ones there warming himself at the fire and they were saying, oh, you, you're one of them, aren't you? And, and uh, he denied the Lord three times. Also, uh, Mark tells us that there were two cock crowings and all the other three, they say there was one uh, cock that, uh, one cock a doodle do. Uh, but the other, but Mark says there was two, so it's very interesting. Some of the things you can read about what people say about the Bible, and the critics really have a go at this particular passage um, because it disagrees with the others, and they think that that is, um, you know, fair game for them uh, to disprove the Bible. But we know that the Bible is true, and uh, if Mark says that there were two. There were two, and we have to uh, use our brains and work out why there was two. Now, uh, the point is not that there was one or two or ten or however many, but the point is that there was one particular one that was very obvious, and when that cock crew, that was the point uh, when uh, Peter had denied the Lord three times. 
I won't go into it any more than that because we could, we could sort of go back and forth uh, for quite some time, but it's not really a, a point that needs to be argued because it is quite easy to understand. Now, one thing I was thinking with this, uh, Mark's particular uh, mentioning that there was an earlier hot crew after the first denial, I thought when Peter heard that, Surely he would have gone as a bit of an indicator. What, what's going on here? What, what am I doing? I'm denying the Lord. He said I would, and the, the cock uh, crowed, and it must have been some sort of indicator. But no, he, he kept on two more times. He denied the Lord, and then the cock uh, crowed that third time. I wonder if you can relate to this. You are a believer, but maybe you just want to fit in. Uh, you know, when you're in your workplace or at your school, you say you are willing to die with him when you're sitting here with, with the congregation in church, but when you actually get out and you are faced with having to stand up for the Lord, uh, maybe you just feel oh, a bit, bit nervous and, and maybe you don't want to identify yourself as a Christian. Uh, this, is, this is sort of what Peter was going through. You're, you may be a secret service Christian. Uh, and if that is you tonight, you need to have a really good hard look at yourself and, and uh, make some decisions tonight. Now we're going to look at after Peter's denials. So we've, we've seen before his denials, we looked at a bit of history about Peter and what we know about him. We've looked at during his denial, the actual denial itself. And now after Pe- Peter's denials... Luke 22 and verse 61. And the Lord turned and looked upon Peter, and Peter remembered the word of the Lord, how he had said unto him, Before the cock crow, thou shalt deny me thrice. And the Lord turned and looked upon Peter. It was at this point that Peter was like, Oh my, what have I done? Now, we know the saying, if looks could kill, this is one time where if looks could kill, that Peter would be no longer. I cannot think of a worse place to be in than what Peter was in right then and there. Peter had just denied his Lord three times, and the Lord just turns and looks straight at him. Now, Peter was affected greatly by this. It was at this point that he realised his own weakness. Peter wept, it says. Peter wept bitterly in some of the verses that we read. It says he wept bitterly. It had finally hit him what he had done. What he said he would not do, he had gone and done just that. The next mention of Peter is in Mark 16, 17. Uh, Sorry, I skipped a little bit there, just going back. Um, So Peter wept bitterly, and it finally hit him what he had done. And after that, what did he do? He went out and hung himself. No, he didn't do that. That was Judas. Judas went out and hung himself. What was Peter's response? Peter went out and wept bitterly. Now, we just want to look at the disillusioned... Uh, after the denials. He was disillusioned after the denials, as were uh, all of the disciples. Um, They didn't know, they should have known what was going on. He'd been telling them for a long time, uh, but they were just, they were like, what is going on? Because as you know, they thought he was going to be the king. He thought, uh, they thought he was going to overthrow the Roman rule and set up his kingdom then and there. Uh, But that... uh, was not what was going to happen and and they were really confused by what was going on here. We are not told whether Peter was at the crucifixion, uh, which happened very shortly after what we read this evening. Uh, So we are not told, we don't know whether he was there. After Jesus' death, the disciples were left disillusioned and with uncertainty as to what to do next. The next mention of Peter was in Mark 16, verse 17. As I said, 
And the angel is speaking to the women at the tomb. And the angel tells them to inform the disciples and Peter. Notice that Peter gets a special mention. When the women brought word that Jesus had risen, what was Peter's response? He ran to the sepulchre. He, was, he, he didn't believe it. He wanted to see for himself. He ran. Peter and John, John as well, they were in a foot race. John got there first. He overtook Peter. Peter must have been a very fast runner. But he got there and he went in. He entered the tomb first. When Peter got there, he couldn't believe his eyes. The Lord was not there. He thought, he's, he's dead, he's gone. He's, you know, they were all confused as to what was going on. He wasn't there. And it, it tells us, and we'll turn to Luke 24 and verse 12. Luke 24 and verse 12. Then arose Peter and ran unto the sepulchre, and stooping down he beheld the linen cloths laid by themselves and departed, wondering in himself at that which was come to pass. He wondered in himself what had come to pass. And in John chapter 21 and verse 3, John 21 and verse 3. There's something else that uh, you just want to look at. Peter was still in the process of working things out. He was still a bit disillusioned. And he says in this verse, Simon Peter saith unto them, I go a fishing. And they say unto him, We also go with thee. They went forth and entered into a ship immediately that night and they caught nothing. So here the, the disciples, they went back to Galilee. They were, you know, all of uh, Jesus' denial and the crucifixion happened in Jerusalem. And after a period of time, Jesus said he would meet them in Galilee and they made their way home to Galilee. And Peter just goes, oh, well, we've got nothing to do. I'm going fishing. And a couple of the others said, okay, we'll, we'll go as well. So they went fishing, he and some other uh, disciples. We don't have time to go into that. That's a whole other story about whether uh, Peter, what that meant by I go a fishing, was he totally giving up on the Lord or not. But um, that's for another time. They were fishing and they didn't catch anything. And there was someone on the shore, we might read on, uh, but when the morning was come, Jesus stood on the shore, but the disciples knew not that it was Jesus. Then Jesus saith unto them, Children, have ye any meat? They answered him, No. And he said unto them, Cast the net on the right side of the ship, and ye shall find. They cast therefore, and now they were not able to draw it for the multitude of fishes. So there was a man on the shore, and they didn't know who it was. And he said, have you caught any fish? And they said, no, we haven't caught any fish. We've been fishing all night and haven't caught any fish. And he said, cast the net on the other side. And they still, they still didn't know who he was. They should have because this has already happened to them before. Uh, but he's, he said, cast the net on the other side and you'll catch fish. And they did just that and they brought in uh, a very big catch of fish. It was at that point that John recognised it's the Lord he was like, oh, I remember this happening before. It's the Lord. He said to Peter, that's the Lord. And Peter, he freaked out because he didn't have any clothes on. He grabbed his fisherman's coat and tried to cover himself up. He jumped into the water and he swam to shore. And then he helped pull the, pull the, uh, the net in. And then they sat down and they had a, a meal with the Lord. I won't read the whole story because it is quite lengthy. Oh, but they sat down and they ate this meal. Now, after they ate, Jesus asked Peter three times if he loved him. Now, I wonder if these three questions had some connection to the three denials. Pastor will correct me later if I am wrong. 
But I just wonder uh, whether there was, there was some connection. There was three times that he denied the Lord. There was three times here that he asked Peter, do you love me? And all three times Peter answered yes. As each time, the, the third time you get the feeling that uh, he's, he's a bit anxious. Yes, Lord, I, I do love you. I love you very much. Maybe it was a way of Jesus showing Peter that he was forgiven. Do you love me, Peter, he asks. And Peter replies, yes. For each consecutive answer, the yes, did it cancel out one of those denials? Jesus then says to him, follow me, Peter, follow me. No more fishing for fish, but follow me and you will be fishers of men. Now what did Peter decide? I'll have to come back next week to find out. No, I won't do that to you. Maybe that's not what he said. Well, last week we look at, at what Peter's response was. What did he decide? His direction after the denials. After the ascension, we find a very different Peter. Not one that tried to sneak in under the radar. No, no, he spoke boldly. He was preaching and proclaiming the gospel. Once again, I wish we had time to look at Acts chapter 2 and look at his sermon that he preached in Acts chapter 2. And him standing up to the religious leaders in chapter 4 of Acts. We know that Peter's remorse was genuine. We know that he went out, he wept bitterly, and he was remorseful. We know that that was genuine uh, because of his boldness. He went... Uh, He went out, he started preaching and bringing others to the Lord. He also wrote two books, 1st and 2nd Peter, and we have those in our Bible. Now by way of conclusion, it's decision time for you. Decision time before your denial. I want to ask a question. What would you do tomorrow? If you were faced with a situation where you had to stand up for your Lord, are you ready? Will you stand up for your Lord? I want to turn to 1 Peter chapter 1. Just the last two verses I want to read. 1 Peter chapter 1 and verse 7 and 8. This is something from Peter's very own pen. That the trial of your faith, being much more precious than of gold that perisheth, though it be tried with fire, might be found unto praise and honour and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ, whom having not seen ye love, in whom, though now ye see him not, yet believing, ye rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of glory. I just want to read a song. I'll read it as a poem, but... um, it's just something I was, I was thinking about as I was uh, preparing this message. I'll read the chorus first. He's still working on me to make me what I ought to be. It took him just a week to make the moon and the stars, the sun and the earth and Jupiter and Mars. How loving and patient he must be. He's still working on me. There really ought to be a sign upon the heart. Don't judge her yet. There's an unfinished part. But I'll be perfect just according to his plan, fashioned by the master's loving hand. Second verse goes, In the mirror of his word, reflections that I see make me wonder why he never gave up on me. He loves me as I am and helps me when I pray. Remember, he's the potter and I'm the clay. And we'll just close in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you, Lord, for your word and I thank you... Uh, for these uh, verses that we looked at this evening and how uh, there was a man who denied you uh, three times. And I pray, Lord, that if we are faced with the same situation, that we would not deny you. I pray that we would stand up with boldness and, and proclaim that we know you and we love you. And I pray that as we go through this coming week, there may be opportunities for us to share your word with people we work with or people we go to school with i pray lord that we would do that with boldness i pray lord that we would learn this lesson that 
Peter had to be taught and it took quite some time. I pray that we can learn this lesson uh, even tonight and be able to speak your name and speak word in, in season to those around us. Lord, I pray that you would go before us this week. In Jesus' name, amen.